guys, today we're going to discuss and look at what makes a keyboard mechanical. Now I've hit on the subject several times tangentially in other videos, but I figured this really deserves a video of its own. So what is a mechanical keyboard? Well, the dictionary definition of mechanical is something to do with machinery, which every keyboard is, so that's not saying much. And the definition of a mechanism is, again, rather broad, but perhaps the most concrete is something that has moving parts. But that's again not very useful because that really only excludes solid state keyboards, such as touch screens and projected keyboards, as well as non-physical keyboards, such as virtual keyboard programs. So in other words, the dictionary is not of much use to us. Now, that wouldn't be too much of a problem if there was a single concrete definition that everybody could more or less automatically agree with. In that case, it would just be jargon or an industry term, which is perfectly fine. But therein lies the problem, because the amount of definitions of a mechanical keyboard is almost endless. Nobody agrees on this at all. And although I think some have more merits than others, almost all commonly used ones turn out to just suck ass if you look at them critically. There's always cases that make no sense or you get questions of where you could draw the line, which defeats the purpose of a definition. Let me give you some examples. One of the most common definitions is that something is mechanical if it includes a coil spring. This excludes traditional rubber domes and includes most switches like Cherry MX, Alps and buckling springs, etc. So fine. However, it also has some inconsistencies. For example, it includes Topra, but unlike almost all the other switches in this definition, in Topra the springs aren't used for return force, but just as a capacitive element, so it's really just coincidental that it ends up in this definition. Furthermore, most foam and foil switches work really weird with this, because linear foam and foil switches tend to use a coil spring as a return element, so they would be included, but tactile versions often use buckling sleeves, so they would be excluded, which makes no sense. I mean, how can the linear version of a switch be mechanical, but the tactile version of the same switch not? And then there's leaf spring switches, such as Fujitsu leaf spring, Digitran Golden Touch, Smith Coronas, and micro switches, which operate with springs that aren't coiled, which would also be non-mechanical in this definition, just because of the shape of the springs. But then, if you include springs of all shapes, why wouldn't a rubber dome count? I mean, that's just a dome-shaped spring made out of rubber. Or, if it has to be made out of metal, what does it matter what material it's made out of, as long as it provides a specific return force? Would Cherry MX no longer be mechanical if they used a coil spring made out of a different material, but worked exactly the same otherwise? The spring criterion just cuts extremely little wood, in my opinion. Some definitions say that the spring must be the actuating part, which is much worse even. This excludes Cherry MX, Alps, almost all switches in use actually, except spring over membrane, in which is genuinely the spring that pushes the contacts together. It, again more or less accidentally, includes Topra because the spring in Topra is a capacitive element that's being pressed down to increase capacitance. But foam and foil switches, which use a metal disc that's being pressed down to increase capacitance, doesn't count even though it works in exactly the same way, it's just the shape of the capacitive element that's different. So if I just make the foil in the shape of a spiral, does it count then? How about the Model M and the Model F? I mean, there is a buckling spring in there which exerts force downwards-ish, but it's ultimately the flipper that causes the actuation in both cases. Does that count then? And how about beam springs? Much worse, it also outright excludes almost all non-conductive switches, such as Hall Effect, Optoelectric, Magnetic Valve, Inductive and Capacitive switches, even though those contain many of the best switches ever made. If they aren't in the definition of a mechanical keyboard, I might not even want my keyboard to be mechanical. Another very common definition is that it should be made up of discrete switches, again like Cherry MX and Alps, but again, this has way too many weaknesses. For example, the IBM models M and F are excluded, while many consider these to be more or less the ultimate mechanical keyboards. Also, switch grids like Hitex and Stackpoles are excluded, because they're made up of a single block with all the switch parts in it. But then if you would saw out all the individual units, they'd suddenly be mechanical, which makes no sense to me at all. Furthermore, where do you draw the line? Keytronic and Maxi Switch magnetic reeds, for example, come in blocks of up to six units. So does that count as not discrete because it's not a single standalone switch for every key? Or does it count as discrete because you can take out the block? And if so, at how many keys per block does it stop counting? 
Or if we look at ACER switches, which are discrete switch units complete with coil, spring and clicker and everything that clip into a mounting plate over a communal membrane set. So is that discrete or not? How about Oki Gore springs? How about Topro, which is individual barrels, individual sliders and individual actuators, but use a shared rubber dome mat? And how about Topra keys that use just a single rubber dome, such as a space bar? But they all still use the same PCB, of course, or should every key have its own PCB or its own keyboard case? It just doesn't work at all. Another popular one is that a switch is mechanical if it doesn't include a rubber dome. But again, that's just riddled with problems. For example, Alps integrated dome are individual switches with pins, a slider, its own electrical contacts, it's soldered into a PCB and everything, but it just happens to use a rubber dome as a return and tactile element. And it even uses it as an actuator because it has a conductive pad on it. I mean, would it really be that fundamentally different if it had a dome shaped coil spring in there with with a conductive pad on it instead of a dome. Or if that wasn't complicated enough, how about versions of the same switch that use a coil spring as well as a rubber dome inside? Does the coil spring suddenly make it mechanical or does the rubber dome override it? Or do they cancel each other out and annihilate? It also includes spring over membrane keyboards, which are exactly the same as, or sometimes much worse even than, a rubber dome keyboard, except it's a spring pressing on the membranes instead of a piece of rubber. Or Apple butterfly switches, which use a dome over a set of membranes, just like a standard keyboard, except the dome is made out of metal rather than rubber. I mean, mechanically speaking, what does it matter what the material is that's pressing on the contacts? It's not like the switch cares what materials it's made of. It doesn't suddenly start to operate by a completely different physical principle or anything. It also excludes Topra, which may use rubber domes, but their capacitive use individual units to a degree and overall are a lot more sophisticated than most boards. So is it really fair that they be excluded? Personally, I'd say not. Also, when is something a rubber dome? For example, do buckling rubber sleeves count? With Keytronics, they're mounted in a dome shape, kinda, although it's more of a cylinder. But on, for example, Mitsumi hybrid switches, they're turned upside down and barely even resemble domes, so does that still count, even if they basically do exactly the same thing? Hell, even touchscreens, projected and virtual keyboards count under this definition. There's just way, way too many holes in this. So how about membranes then? Something is mechanical when it doesn't use a membrane. Well, this actually does include Topra, which uses a PCB, and it includes BTC dome with slider as well, because that also uses a PCB. But almost all other dome with slider switches, like NMB, Scorpius, Alp, Sigin, Electron, etc., don't count, even though they work exactly the same as the BTCs, just with the contacts printed on membranes rather than on a piece of resin bonded paper. Again, it even excludes the old Daddy O, the Model M, while it includes the Model F, even though they're both buckling spring and work in exactly the same way, except for the sensing mechanism, which you can't even feel anyway. It also excludes Acer switches, which, again, are discrete switches with springs, clickers, the whole lot. It just happens that they sit over a set of membranes rather than a PCB. But what does the switch care, really? And it excludes Oki Gourd Springs, which are these really cool single part clicky switches, which again just happen to sit over a membrane. So if they used a capacitive PCB for these instead, that would suddenly make them mechanical or what? It just makes no sense at all. Never mind the fact that it again includes touch screens, projected and virtual keyboards. Coming to the final common definition, which is that it should have mechanical contacts, by which I'm guessing it means it uses moving contacts like Cherry MX and Alps where the contact terminals are made to meet. This might even be the very worst one of them all. This doesn't exclude rubber dome or membrane keyboards, because even with membranes you're still pushing a set of contacts towards each other, fundamentally exactly the same as Cherry MX. And it does include magnetic reed switches, but on the other hand, it excludes all the other interesting things like capacitive, hall effect, optoelectric, magnetic valve, inductive, etc. switches. In fact, this is the only definition so bad that it includes the Model M, but excludes the Model F. So, to a certain extent, it includes the things you don't want, and it excludes almost everything you do want. Just... <clears throat> 
a while ago I postulated a definition based on a criterion that's not really ever used, but which I think has at least more merit than any of the others, which is a system that actuates partway through the travel before bottoming out. The advantage of this system is that it automatically sorts by a very practical criterion, namely on whether it has one of the biggest benefits of mechanical keyboards. Partway actuation is what allows us to type more comfortably. Cheap rubber dome keyboards actuate only when bottoming out, so you really have to mash the keys together, or something like Cherry MX actuates at 2 out of 4 millimeters travel, giving a much more comfortable typing feel. Also, it excludes cheap rubber domes and also solid state keyboards because they have no travel, but includes Topra and reportedly also some of the better dome slider switches. But, while practical, it's still not immune to criticism. Sure, partway actuation is one of the advantages of mechanical keyboards, but it's not the only one, and maybe not the one everyone wants to sort by. Also, you could theoretically make a version of a switch like Cherry MX, for example, where you just change the shape of this little piece of plastic here, so that it actuates at 4 out of 4 rather than 2 out of 4 millimeters. I mean, sure, the switch would feel much worse, but it wouldn't change anything about how the switch fundamentally operates, which should, let's be honest, be what the mechanism is all about in the end. So, in conclusion, all definitions suck, which is why I guess there is no consensus. Of course, sometimes even I use the term mechanical, for example, to convey a certain key feel, because there's not always a better term around for that. You know, for example, I could say that Cherry MX feels more mechanical than a rubber dome switch, in the same sense that it conveys more of the satisfying feeling of operating, for example, a well-oiled bolt-action rifle or an old typewriter. You know, you get what I mean. It's a crutch, but there's not much of a way around that. It gets much worse though when people try to class something as being mechanical or not being mechanical, because that immediately attaches a stigma to something without even looking at how good it actually is. You know, oh, that's optical, it's not mechanical. That makes it sound like optical switches aren't even worth pursuing, while all the ones I tried are actually way better than the supposedly mechanical ones that are standard today. So when people go out and say, that's not mechanical, it just feels like keyboard racism really, which <laughs> sounds bizarre. Are, but honestly, that's more or less exactly what it is. So what if it doesn't conform to some completely arbitrary definition of a criterion that might not even be important in the first place? So what do I propose? Well, like I said, the term is a useful crutch to convey a key feel that is not rubber dome-like. When you say to someone, this feels mechanical, they usually get what you mean, even if there's no true definition of it. And yeah, of course, if anything, it makes people find my videos more easily. But mechanical as a qualifier, I think that does a lot more harm than it helps. Instead, why not forget about whether something technically qualifies as mechanical or not, and just try it out and see if you like it or not? Who cares if it adheres to some random definition anyway? As long as it feels good to you and works nicely in the end, that's all we're after, right? Let it hinge on its own merits and flaws rather than on technicalities. Because, like I said at the start, if you pull out the dictionary, basically everything is mechanical. So, unless you're prepared to adhere to the dictionary definition, we're technically all equally wrong. I'm sure the term mechanical keyboard won't go away overnight, in fact I won't even completely stop using it myself for the reasons I mentioned before, but I do hope at least that this video will make people think about this topic and to make people exercise their own judgement on whether or not a keyboard is actually good, rather than by whether it conforms to one of a dozen definitions that are completely arbitrary anyway. That's it for this video, it's a bit different from my usual style, but I think it was well worth exploring this topic in depth. Please let me know whether you enjoyed this video and what your thoughts are on the matter because I think it's an interesting topic. Thank you for watching and see you next time.